Salvation being this process of how God is working redemption out in our lives. But I, it, I think I've said in the video on the day, it would take me to have a private setting to go line upon line and go from scripture to scriptures and show you guys exactly how I arrived at those thoughts that I've shared thus far. But uh, if you are a student of the, of the Word, you can probably go back over the videos and get a few key words in, in what I was saying. And God can speak to you and give you your own tapestry. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But I, I like something else that I found in my notes from a time ago, a few years back. Uh, let me just go ahead and give you what I've said. Then I'm going to give you something about someone who I highly esteem. He's no longer in the air. He's going on to his reward. But he, along with Watchman Nee, you know anything about him? Mm -hmm. Those individuals who knew the pneumatic life, what it means to live inspired from the Spirit of God, not just to be uh, charismatic or Pentecostal, but actually understood the, the ascended aspect of uh, being a Christian, living from the next dimension. And God gave him a grace to communicate it. Uh, you don't hear much about them, but they are some powerful keys to receiving uh, the principles that are laid out in the New Testament as it relates to the new birth and the creation man. Amen. Amen. So we 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 went over to uh, Zechariah's. I mean, yeah, Zechariah. Let's go there real quick. Let's go to Zechariah. Then I'm gonna give you some of my notes. Then I'm gonna give you what he said. Then I'm gonna give you my some more of my notes. <laughs> oh, that wasn't funny. Okay, Zechariah nine. Remember now, we have some expectations tonight. Amen. Okay, we're gonna piggyback off what she said. Is that okay? Zechariah 9, and it's very powerful. It says in verse 11, As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit. Right? Wherein is no war. I would love to spend a large volume of time on that. that that's a very important part too, ain't, ain't it? When they talk about no war. They ain't talking about dehydration, huh? Those are spiritual pictures, right? No water. Mm -hmm. But uh, it says, turn ye, change your mind, change your perspective. Understand the stronghold. That's my interpretation. Turn ye to the stronghold. The stronghold is not talking about imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. There is only one stronghold, as it says in uh, Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower or a stronghold. And the righteous run away from it. <laughs> run into it and are what? Safe. Or saved. Or what we would say in the Septuagint, sozoed. The name of the Lord is important. That's why we have uh, we have a legal right to use that name, right? Yeah, we do, y'all. Yeah, we do. Ye prisoners of Hope. Even today do I declare that I will render what? Double, Double unto you. That's a message for somebody else. Yeah. I double dog dare you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to go and look that double up. And let the Spirit speak to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But I already gave you insight. It is a, a part of the firstborn. Double. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. We, we went to the, uh, the blood of the covenant. We, we, we broke down a few scriptures and we, we, we established that the, that covenant was set into motion at the cross and we spent time talking about the cross. It is our, you know, in the Old Testament they had to build altars, brazen altars. They, Abraham made a few of them out of stone and then it was told in Exodus 20 not to, not to let a hammer or a tool touch the stone. You know anything about altars? And, you know, then Moses came into play and he built an, a brazen altar that all of the all of the uh, tribes had to approach that altar. Right? And they had to slay and gut animals.
animals and it was a bloody river every time and you know thank god we don't like it, it i mean yes, thank yes, god yes, we don't have to go to get livestock yes. <laughs> well we have a blood that's efficacious timeless the same yesterday today and forever the blood that never loses its power and there's a song somewhere y'all heard that before okay let me move on but anyhow we talked about how important that cross is. The blood of the covenant for us begins its initiation through the cross. That the offering that Jesus afforded us on the cross became a propitiation, an atonement for all of mankind. Without me reiterating, <laughs> reiterating over and over about certain things. You know, so we can move on to the prison of the pit. We discovered that God was in Christ reconciling us to himself, rescuing us from the former state of being, our former conversation. Ain't that powerful? Yes, on the cross, he done away with who you used to be. Amen. And what we have to do now, as we're going to talk about on tonight, is get knowledge. And, get, and somehow don't get entangled with theology because there's so many variations in theology. The most important ology is Christology. We need to have Christology. That's the most accurate lens. So we have to see it through his nature, Amen. not through our academics, right? Amen. Because uh, there's a lot of voices out there. A lot of people just selling books for sake of selling books, yeah. and more of us are more more people are gullible yeah. to what they're hearing. Mm -hmm. And the dragon has opened up his mouth on Facebook. Yes. Okay. It's a proliferation mm -hmm. of self-professing vanguards of truth. Mm -hmm. Yada yada. <laughs> God bless. Bless us, man. We need some saving, though. We need some real so so to escape the, the guile that the deception is in the earth today. But thank God we love truth and we chose his way. We don't have to be entangled with the affairs of this world. Amen? Amen. And we said the cross is the way of delivering all the humanity from the fallen state that was in Adam. Thank God. Cross, a cavalry was God's way of doing, doing away with the first man so that he can bring into fruition the last Adam. Right? The new creation, man. That the old man was broken. The power of the old man is no longer or should no longer be in existence or in operation in us. That uh, what he did in his death and burial, I mean, death and resurrection, and what he did through the atonement, the work of grace that was exemplified through Jesus Christ, it changed our relationship with the Father. Forever. Tell your neighbor forever. Forever. And guess what? He didn't wait on you to get yourself together. Amen. He did it ahead of us. Yes, he did. Amen. Amen. With, for us, without us. Yes. And now all I need to do is to surrender Amen. to that act of grace. Yes, and I have to get informed yes, of how it transpired yes, so that it can come alive in my being. And that's why revelation, knowledge is so important. You can read the scriptures and think you got life in it. You can be strong in academics. You can have a, a knowledge base that is superior to your peers. But until there's a, a, a marination, of what I call a, 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 con a conglomerate or a co-mingling, that's the word. A co-mingling of the word and the spirit as it was in the beginning. That's the pattern, y'all. When you go to Genesis 1, what happened? Without form, void, and void, right? Talking about creation. Yes, yes. Yes. Am I right? Yes, sir. And the Holy Spirit was what? Ooh. Brooding. That word brooding or hovering over yes. is the incubation. That's what it was. It's, it's a word that has to do with a, uh, 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 like a, a, a mother would brood over her nest. Yes. So there was, it's an act of conception. And that's what the Holy Spirit was doing. Yes. But even with the moving of the Holy Spirit, it still was without form and void. Amen. Until what happened? A voice came. Yes. And said what? Let there be light. And light came.
came into fruition. Amen. So we need what? The word spoken, and we need the activity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He has to hover over it. That's why we can't just be a, a word-based church. We just can't be a people that's just a glutton for revelation. You know, we want to be a people that not only are uh, disciples or disciplined learners, searchers of truth, not only people who have the ear for the Spirit, for, the, for, for what's going on, what, should I say, an eye for what we read in scriptures, but then we need to have an ear for the Holy Spirit because they are in tandem. Yeah. And I tell you tonight, what God has joined to, yeah. let no man. Yeah. I know we that setting, we use it for a lot of things. We use it for <coughs> married folks, but I'm here, there's a marriage between the Word and the Spirit. Yes. So what God has joined together, mm -hmm. let no theology cut us under. Or your incorrect ideology put it asunder. Or religion or tradition. Those things come to put what God has joined together asunder. Yeah. 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 So the cross actually reversed the curse for all of us. I tell you never he reversed it. And he removed the penalty of sin for all of us. And he made each and every one of us. He set the course for us to be recreated, to be renewed in the spirit of our mind, so that we could be partakers of his divine nature. Amen? Amen. Amen. Then we went over to Hebrews. We stopped at Hebrews 10 and 19, I believe. Am I right? Y'all got the notes. Am I right? We was hanging over there. We was hanging over there. I tell you that we was hanging. Amen. 